Hello everyone, it is Haley, aka Haley's Hobbies, and welcome back to my channel where I talk about my hobbies. Hello, hi. If you recognize my outfit, yes, it is the same as last week's video. <laughs> um, I am filming these videos back to back. If I don't film this video right now, I'm never going to film it. <laughs> so welcome back to another video. It is another bookish video. I'm going to be talking about all the books that I've read the past few months. It has been a lot. Um, I've discovered audiobooks. So I have 21 books that I've read in the past few months. This is for um, July, August, and September. And so I made like a little spread just to... No, this is not it. Um, I So I have been reading quite a lot. So I think around July I was a little behind in my Goodreads goal, which is 35 books this year. Um, and so I actually stopped knitting, which is like my obsessive hobby. I will knit nonstop if I can. And so I was like, Haley, take a break from knitting. Your hands hurt, your elbows hurt, just stop. So I stopped and I've just started knitting like again the past week. It is now October. So I haven't knit from like July to September. And when I tell y'all that I have been reading like nuts, I have been reading like nuts because now instead of knitting, all I do is read. And I have surpassed my Goodreads goal. My Goodreads goal is 35 books this year. I think after September, let's see, I'm at 37 books and I just keep reading. <laughs> um, I've discovered audiobooks essentially. I have a long work commute and I was just kind of like, I wonder if I should read like an audiobook or something um, because I was trying to read Fourth Wing and I couldn't get the physical book. And so I was like, let me try the audiobook. And I got the audiobook like right away. And so I was like, okay, let's try this. And when I tell you this has opened up like a whole new world for me, I now listen to audiobooks every day on the way to work. I can get through an audiobook like in a week, sometimes start start like a second book uh, in the same week. Depends on how long the books are. And so I've just been having a grand old time listening to so many books on my way to and from work. And so because of that, my like, reading has essentially like doubled and it has basically tripled because now I'm reading like 24 seven. So anyway, let's just jump right in. So July. So in July, I read one, two, three, four, five, six books. So if, for reference, if you're new here, I typically read like three to four books a month. So me jumping past this is like nuts. Okay. So the first book that I read, and I'm going to lump this with another book, is um, Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. So I've actually never read Fourth Wing. It obviously got big on TikTok and everyone was going nuts about it. And Iron Flame came out pretty quickly after that. And I always thought I would hate Fourth Wing. I got the audiobook and I was like, I'm not gonna like this, it's gonna be really bad. I liked it. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like five stars. Um, I am just a simple person. Um, you put dragons in there five stars. I love it. I don't know how why I love it so much. Obviously, is it the best written book? No, but I thought it was going to be a lot worse from what people were saying on TikTok. However, I actually don't think it's that bad of a book. Um, if you look more into it, it's probably not that great, but gener like, in general, this I think the story is pretty good. And what's funny is that I actually had the same like idea with the dragons and like the powers actually because I love to make like story ideas. I like thought about this like before Fourth Wing and then Fourth Wing came out and then I was reading Fourth Wing and I was like this is my idea. And so I think that's just so funny that like um I think there's like this like saying in the universe where like if you don't act on like a story idea it gets like put back into the universe and someone else acts on it. Um, I can't think of the exact exact thing and then also it's kind of like validating like oh I had an idea that's like publishable wow so yeah anyway if you don't know fourth wing is about this this Gaith war college I think is what it's called um again I haven't read this book since July I've been reading so many books it's kind of hard to remember some things but essentially you follow Violet who wants to be a scribe but at the very last minute her mom is like no you're gonna be a dragon rider and the way it works kind of in her area is that you go into one of the different quadrants and so I think it's healers quadrant, scribe quadrant, dragon riders quadrant, and then like the infantry quadrant and so she wanted to be a scribe but her mom was like no you're going to be in the dragon riding squadrant. Um, I can't remember what the exact reason was but she ends up going to the dragon quadrant and basically this place is ruthless. Hardly anyone makes it through and if you make it through all the training 
you might still not make it through because you have to bond to a dragon and there's no telling if you're actually going to bond to a dragon just because you make it through all of these training stuff does not mean that you're going to bond to a dragon. I wasn't expecting it to be like violent like a lot of people were like yeah it's pretty like you know violent it's a wolf college but I wasn't actually expecting it to like be so like like death heavy I guess like there's a lot of death in here and maybe it's not like the most violent thing because obviously everyone has different like ideas of violence but to me I was really shocked because I was just not expecting that going in and I really enjoyed it um and so essentially Violet is just like discovering things about the war college and about kind of the outer like world around them and kind of like the magic and the stuff is going on and there's a romance with it and I don't know if I'm obsessed with the romance I think in the first book I wasn't as obsessed um because it's advertised as enemies to lovers and it is not enemies to lovers I need fantasy authors to stop doing enemies to lovers because they're not doing it right like the only person I've seen do it right is um Crier's War that's the only person I've seen do it right like you need to be like mortal enemy wanting to destroy your enemy and like killing them essentially to be enemies to lovers like most fantasy authors do like haters to lovers like <sighs> anyway I did like the romance a bit more in the second book because I feel like we got to see the characters a bit more um and yeah I'm very excited for the third book I think it comes out in January I will be picking it up from the library because all the books come out in hardback and I don't like hardback <laughs> I'm waiting for it to come out in paperback and I'll probably just wait until the whole series is out so that way if there are any cover changes I can get just a complete set that's not has a different cover you know so anyway so I read those two books and we're already pretty long into this video so I'm just gonna rapid fire go through these okay so the next book I read was not in love I did not I was not in love <laughs> I didn't like this I gave it like 2.75 stars I think I don't know I'm I'm not too strict with my ratings but typically if a book is like two stars it means that I don't really like it and so not in love I just didn't like so this is by Allie Hazelwood and the problem I think was that this was very different from a lot of her other books she writes you know steminist like women in stem kind of romantic comedies and I have really enjoyed the few books that I read from her, Love Theoretically, I think remains my favorite of her books. Um, I don't know what was in that book, but I just really enjoyed that one. And um, I, so you know, I, I like her. I'll read what she puts out. She writes the same thing every time, but like, I still like it. And so I was excited for Not In Love, but it wasn't very good, <laughs> um, in my opinion. Um, it wasn't a romantic comedy and she starts off with a note saying that and I feel like if you have to start with a note in your book maybe that's a bad sign but I can't even remember who the two characters were but you had one who I think was a oh god what biochemical engineer is that what it is I don't know she worked in like food systems and kind of uh, food preservation and food food preservation and stuff like that and then the other like main character the male love interest he um is trying to like acquire the company that she works in and so straight off right off the bat they meet um to potentially like sleep together or something and so then they end up deciding not to for whatever reason a while later he comes into her company and she's like i know you and so yeah um Part of the reason why I didn't like it was one because it felt so like stale and stunted I guess. Um, the main character is just so like blunt. It was like a bit more serious and just more like blunt and there really wasn't any like comedy to it like the previous Ally Hazelwood books and so it was just a little too different and part of the, also why I didn't like it was I feel like the main characters didn't really like each other except like like physically. There's like a very strong physical like attraction between the two of them like right off the bat and that's about it um I think uh the author even said like they have so much like trauma that they don't really know how to bond other than like physically and I think the, uh Allie just kind of did that too much like we don't really get to see them bond emotionally and so I think that's kind of what really made me not like it I don't know I just wasn't vibing with it I felt like they just didn't really care for each other and then I think I like the 
latter half of the book a bit better, but it wasn't enough to like make me want to go out and buy the book. I was actually going to buy the book and read it, but I was like, no, I'll get it from the library. And I'm glad I did because I would not buy this book, essentially. <laughs> that is about it. Okay, anyway, so the next book I read was Carmilla. I forgot who the author is by, or who the author is, but essentially this is like a vampire, like sapphic story. And I was really excited for this. It is a classic. It actually happens before Dracula. And I think there's a book right now that is a Carmilla retelling. And I was really excited for this book, but I ended up not liking it either. Um, I don't know why. It felt weird. Like, I just was like, something was just off about it. And I couldn't quite pinpoint what. I don't know what else to say about it. I was let down. I thought it was going to be a bit better, but I think it was just too short, maybe, is what my problem was with it. And I really need to, like, actually write down, like, a few sentences every time I finish a book because I feel like this isn't very helpful, but yeah, I don't know if maybe I just read it too quickly or what, but something was off and I didn't really enjoy it, so I think I rated it, like, two stars or something, which is really sad, so maybe one day I'll, like, try it again and maybe I'll like it then, but it just something was weird. I don't know what it was. Y'all will be so excited to hear that I finally finished The Count of Monte Cristo. <gasps> so I started reading this book in January and I was gonna do it along with Emma and Carolyn's book club, um, Book of Tomes is it? Or the Big Tome? I don't know. Uh, they do like big books, you know, every few months, reading book club kind of thing. And so I read the County Monte Cristo with them. However, I really didn't. It took me until July to finish it. However, I've been tracking like the days that I read certain books, which has been a lot of fun. And when I count all of the County Monte Cristo days that I've read, it really only took me a month. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> oh, are you ready? Look at all my tabs. And this isn't even like everything that I like highlighted either, but I just was like obsessed with this, if you can't tell. It was just wonderful. Like, I loved it. Um, I gave it five stars. Um, and if I was being really critical, I'd probably give it 4.75 like, just because of how the romance ends up. If you know, you know. But however, I can recognize the reason why it happens. And so, five stars, but like, enjoyability, 4.75 stars probably. Um, uh, I have no room on my classic shelf anymore, if you can't tell. That's why I had to like stick the Count of Monte Cristo down there. Um, but yeah, if you don't know, the Count of Monte Cristo is about Edmund Dantes, who is a man. He is like 18 at the time of the novel opening, and he gets wrongfully com convicted of a crime, essentially like aiding and abetting Napoleon. And at this time, this is like a big no-no, this is treason. So he gets sent to uh, the Chateau d'If. Prison. He gets stuck there forever. Um, and so the book follows kind of the events of him getting sent to prison and all the events after of him getting his revenge. And it's so good. It's so long. There's a whole section with about 200 pages with like Rome that I did not like. And that was part of the reason why it took me so long to finish the book. But once I got past those like 200 pages, then after that, it took like a matter of a few weeks to finish the book. And it is so good. Ugh. I don't want to spoil like the romance stuff too much, but I feel like there was just so much build up, And so kind of the ending was a bit of a letdown, but I can understand why it happened. Anyway, so that was the Count of Monte Cristo. I, did, I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't read it but I can't wait to watch the movie there's like a couple and so I'm really excited to watch them me and my grandma wanted to watch them I think actually Henry Cavill is in one of them I think he plays um oh my god what is his name I can't even remember his name is it Andres I can't remember Albert is it Albert I think it's Albert anyway Count of Monte Cristo <laughs> and so then the last book that I read in July was Breathless by David Quammen I have uh, two of his books. Spillover is like my favorite nonfiction book of all time, I think. I love it. I read it like two years ago, I think, at this point. And so Breathless is another book of his that is about the coronavirus and its sort of outbreak in 2020, obviously, and the pandemic, which is still going on. Um, and also it talks a lot about the 2002-2003 outbreak of SARS, which is kind of how we were able to get a vaccine so quickly is because we technically have seen this virus before, 
This is just like a new, kind of new different one. Um, cause SARS-CoV-1 is the 2002, 2003 epidemic. And then obviously it evolved, changed, and that's how we got the 2020 outbreak. Um, and so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I had a hard time with it though, because it's very like date heavy. And so it's hard to keep track. And I listened to this as an audiobook and audiobooks with like nonfiction are just not it for me. Um, I, I had a hard time following along and I kept zoning out, um, which doesn't happen with like fiction books. And so I think it's just because it's nonfiction and I kind of treat it as like a podcast. And so I just come in and out of it. And so I did have a hard time following along. Um, and so I think that was kind of my problem with it, but overall I really enjoyed it and I think it, um, was really good and I really did like it. I like infectious disease books, so yes. Anyway, moving on to August. I've been talking for 20 minutes and we still have two more months to go. Okay, so I read a lot in August. I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. Um, so the first book I read was Every Time You Hear That Song. This is, um, like a sapphic ish, um, contemporary-ish <laughs> romance. So it follows two timelines. You have, um, I can't remember her name, but someone else, and who is in the present time with her friend. And then you follow, I keep wanting to say Dolly Parton because it reminded me so much of Dolly Parton, but it's not Dolly Parton. You follow this other girl in her timeline, which is in like the 1960s, I think. And so, Essentially, the girl from the 1960s is a country singer, and she you follow her life throughout the book, you know, and kind of the romance that she has through it, and kind of like her kind of obsession with fame and stuff. And then in the present timeline, this woman dies and leaves a like treasure hunt kind of thing for every all of her fans because she's like the biggest country singer like one of the biggest artists like dolly she's basically dolly parton it's like if dolly parton and taylor swift were combined into one book because you have like the games and like the easter eggs and all the stuff that taylor does with dolly parton <laughs> um and so you have the main character who wants to take part in this treasure hunt because it's so important like she loves this woman so much and so her friend helps her with this like treasure hunt kind of scavenger hunt kind of thing to kind of um figure out all these clues and to release different songs of the singers and then at the end whoever like gets like the last clue I think wins money or something yes that's kind of how it works and I enjoyed this I think I gave it I give it four stars I think my main problem was that I wanted more of the older character in her timeline I think if I just I really loved her story and kind of her descent into obsession with fame and everything and kind of putting all of that first before, you know, the things she cared in her life, like the romance and everything. And so it was just kind of like devastating to watch this happen and it like broke my heart. It was like so bittersweet. And the other POV I didn't really care for to be completely honest. And there was a bit of romance in that timeline and it just didn't feel very, like I didn't really care about it. I didn't think it added anything to the story. Yeah, I think that's why I ended up giving it four stars, but I definitely recommend it if that sounds interesting to you. Okay, so then the next three books um, are all audiobooks. I read the Prophecy of the of the Forgotten Fae trilogy. So the first book is The Throne of Shadows, the second book is The Cage of Crystal, and the third book is A Fate of Flame. Why is no one talking about these books? They're so good. Oh my god, they're like they're so good. They are very slow, I will admit. Like, they're very slow going, but I really, really loved them um, because they have so much world building in them, especially by the time the third book comes around, and I was obsessed. I don't think I've ever really heard anybody talking about this series, like, ever, but it's so good. And so you have Korra, who is wrongfully convicted of a murder of, like, the princess and the queen in this one, like, kingdom, and so she's sort of, like, on the run and she's been kind of on the run for the past however many years, I think like six years or something. And she's also a witch. She um, kind of ends up being with, uh, what are they called? Oh my God, I don't remember their names. The Farron, I think is what it is. Is it? I don't know. Um, there's so much to this series, but um, essentially she is a part of this like group of people who 
are witches and they have like quiet magic so like things that you can't really like see like whereas like someone with like loud magic would be like fire and like Vah! but like they kind of practice more quiet magic and like magic of the earth and beautiful kind of things that like you can't really see but like it's there but like you can't see it unless like you know about it you know so then there is also prince tern who is um looking for looking for a few things because there's this hearts hunt thing going on with his fiance and she essentially wants like a unicorn or like three unicorns or something and unicorns don't exist and so he's like you're joking right so he but he goes he goes on this hunt and he meets Cora, who he's like oh my god this is the girl who is wanted for murder and so he's like well i could bring her in <laughs> and so then Cora also is kind of like well i could use him for something because he knows about the unicorns because apparently the unicorns are real they're supposed to be extinct but they are coming back and so um it's kind of like they're just playing each other and then there's this whole plot kind of this bigger arching plot of this man who wants all magic to himself and this man, I forgot what his name is called, but oh my god, it's so good. The romances are so good. There's a couple in here. The actual like storyline is so good. It's very like, it's a mixture of plot and like character kind of development. There's a lot of character development because kind of the big thing about the magic system for like the soft, quiet magic is that like you don't like make advances in the magic until you kind of overcome like a personal boundary in your life. And so a lot of times it's Korra trying to like be like, what the heck is going on? Why can't I feel my magic? Um, and then her kind of confronting the thing that she is stuck against. And so it's a lot about like the personal growth and development and then you also have the plot with like the magic and like the unicorns and i loved it oh my god this series is amazing no one i feel like people need to read this book i definitely want to get like physical copies of the book you have like the chosen fae or the the chosen one like kind of trope which i feel like is done really well and then you have like enemies to lovers or kind of like haters to lovers which is done really well it's just i love it so much um and the third book i'd say is my least favorite just because i felt like it the um felt a little anticlimactic with like the evil person the first two books just were amazing and then it just fell a little flat in the third book but overall and maybe it was just because i was listening to it so fast because i managed to get it up to like 2.5 speed but yeah overall i was obsessed i loved it i definitely recommend it wonderful probably my favorite series of the year one of my favorite series of the years i loved these books so the last book i read this month was red queen by victoria aveyard i think is her name um, I've actually never read the Red Queen series and so I saw that they were available in audiobook and I got kind of excited because I always wanted to read that series when I was younger but I never did and so I've been listening to it on audiobook. I'm actually on King's Cage right now and I did enjoy it. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the best thing I've ever heard and it's definitely like a product of its time and Mare, who is the main character, is very repetitive. Um, she says like the few same few things every few sentences and for whatever reason the author has to like leave off on like a really like like dramatic saying at the end of a paragraph and then she does it in the next paragraph and then the next paragraph and then the next paragraph and so it just loses that like like weight to it you know so it was very annoying but I did enjoy it it's just a bit I I was actually not going to continue the series actually but I got the audiobook for uh, Glass Sword, and so I was like, I'll just continue it. And then I liked where the Glass Sword ended, so I was like, I'll just continue it. So now I'm just continuing it. So yeah, it's easy to listen to when I'm driving. So I read Red Queen, and then that takes us to September. So I read a lot in September as well. I read eight books, and I surpassed my Goodreads goal. So yay! The first book that I finished in September was Asterion, which is the book one in the Court of the Underworld series, I think is what it's called. And I only downloaded or like listened to these because the audiobook was like six hours and there were a bunch of copies available so I didn't have to wait for anything because I was waiting for audiobooks. And so this series is not very good. It's, <laughs> it's basically just smut um, and then like some little loose plots in there. But it's kind of entertaining to like listen to like it doesn't take much to listen to they're not great but like 
it's just kind of entertaining, you know? And so uh, Asterion is the first book, and then I also read the second book, which is Medusa, and then the third book is Hades, and then the author gets into other gods as well. And so the first three books kind of follow one storyline, I think, and I can't remember what they're called, um, but there's like an evil organization that is trying to like put an end to all the monsters that uh, are in the world. Essentially you have New Greece or something and Hades kind of turned things around and made it a lot better and I think like something happened and like a lot of like the monsters uh, and like gods and stuff from the underworld all kind of like came out and so that now they're in the real world and Hades kind of has made like a little court and he's trying to kind of make the city a better place and stuff and so then you have the evil organization who's like no we don't want you here and so they're trying to kind of get rid of all the monsters and so then you have the main characters in the first book it's Asterion and Ariadne and so they're all Greek mythology retellings and so Asterion is the Minotaur and Ariadne is like the girl that was in that little retelling and so she's uh the author is kind of just like twisting the things that happen in the book so Asterion and Ariadne are like the first couple and then you have Medusa and Percy <laughs> in the second book Perseus and so yeah you follow their romance while they're also trying to put down this evil organization and I haven't read Hades yet but it's supposed to kind of end in I think the evil organization is supposed to end in that series and then she does whatever in the next ones. I don't know what happens in the next ones. I haven't read that far ahead, but yeah, so I might read Hades at some point if I can't find another audiobook, but they're just entertaining and easy to read. Um, they're not works of art or anything, but if you just need something to read really quick, I would recommend it. So then I read another audiobook, which is In Search of Mycotopia. This is another nonfiction. I actually have the um, physical book here, and so I read a bit of the physical book with the audiobook. But when I was driving, I also read the audiobook in the car. And again, this kind of just reaffirms my point that I am not like a nonfiction audiobook kind of person. And also, I just wasn't a big fan of this book, actually. I was kind of disappointed. I thought it was going to be more about like mycology and like different mushrooms and like all these things. But it was more about like the social aspect behind it and kind of like political kind of like uh, the political science of like and the social like issues of like mycology and like kind of what mycology represents to like like citizens you know and on one hand that's like a really good idea and I did enjoy like hearing more about that because I didn't realize that's kind of what the field of my like how much of the field of mycology is in terms of like um, accessibility and like inclusivity and whatnot um, but I wasn't expecting that and so it just kind of threw me off guard and so I kind of was just like eh, whatever when I finished it It wasn't quite what I was looking for and so because of that I didn't really enjoy it too much But I think if I read it again in the future with the mindset that I'm going to be learning about kind of like the social Like aspect behind mycology then I would have enjoyed it better So if that's something, like something you're interested in I definitely recommend it I just thought it was going to be more about the science and so that's kind of where I was kind of left wanting for more but Anyway, so then the next book that I read was House of Sky and Breath, which is Crescent City 2. I also enjoyed this. If you want to learn more, check out Goodreads. I have the third book actually from the library, and so I'm going to be reading that this month, hope. So the next book that I read was Voyage of the Basilisk by Marie Brennan. This is book three in the Lady Trent series, um, most known for probably A Natural History of Dragons, which it's wonderful. So this book, follow, this series follows Isabella as she figures out dragon taxonomy and sort of like where dragons, like the evolution of dragons and like kind of where they came from and like why are they in the world, what are they doing, yada yada. She's a dragon naturalist essentially. And so I love the series. It's amazing. It's wonderful. The first book I really loved. The second book, now that I'm like looking back after have read after have read the third book, I don't like as much because the second book is very politics heavy. You actually don't listen to or get a lot of dragons in the book, and it's just very politics heavy. But I still like kind of enjoyed it, and I thought it was I I mean yeah I still enjoyed it. But the third book, the third book I loved because we really got so much of the dragon like like taxonomy and like 
naturalism and like ecology and like all these wonderful things and I just felt like it was what I was missing from the second book and so I like immediately checked out the fourth book and I'll try and read it maybe this month or next month depending on when I get to it but I really really love this book and I definitely recommend it if you kind of want like an academic kind of vibe this is kind of set like back in time where like I don't know what exact era it is in but we're kind of in like a magical earth if that makes sense um we're, we're not exactly in like London and then England but we're in like that kind of is it Victorian I don't even know like industrial revolution kind of like era where women still kind of are bound to the you know marriage market then you have Isabella who just really loves science you know I really recommend it I really love it I love the whole series so far and I definitely want to get physical copies when I have the chance the covers are so pretty like the prettiest covers I've ever seen and so yeah definitely recommend probably my favorite book one of my favorite books of September um, so then the next book I read is also an audiobook, and this is A Bright Heart. I, I liked this book. I wasn't crazy about it. So you follow um, Mingxin, who is the main character, and literally in the first chapter she gets murdered. <laughs> and um, turns out the man that she loved kind of betrayed her and um, kind of worked his way into the throne by nefarious means. So, and she's dying and she's like, if I could go back in time, I would make sure that he never gets on the throne and like this never happens and so all of a sudden she wakes up and she's 16 again not 18 she gets put back in time two years and she's like oh my god i'm in the past and she's like oh my god i gotta stop so and so what's the name rune i think i think it's rune um i have to stop rune from becoming king and so the whole book you're following her as she attempts to kind of stop this and um there's a bit of romance in there there's um, a lot of magic in there and overall I wasn't too obsessed with this book. I think the author really missed the mark because you start off with her getting murdered and then immediately going back into time and then immediately she doesn't really like the the main character Mingxin doesn't really stick to the script. Maybe I've been watching too much of The Flash but essentially in order not to change the timeline you have to do the exact same but obviously she's trying to change the timeline then it's like, girl, you're doing too much. I think you're being too obvious about it. I just kept getting so annoyed. And I think the biggest point is that you don't feel anything about these characters. You don't feel anything about the betrayal because you weren't there for it until the very last second. And so you didn't get any of that buildup. And so I think what would have been so good is if, that, if the author had made a first book, like the, if she had made the book that I read, A Bright Heart, the second book, and had written a first book so essentially a prequel but like let's say she wrote the first book all about Rune and Mingxin and their romance and her being like brought into the royal family because I think she's a merchant's daughter um and so it would have been so nice to kind of hear her kind of get or see her coming into this seeing like bits of magic come into the world because there's just also like magic in this world and then all the way up building until the very end where she's betrayed and killed and then go into the second book where you where she goes back in time to make sure all this doesn't happen and this would have been so much better that way i feel like we were just missing so much because of that and i just did not care i did not really care at all um, about anything that happened because of that i kind of like the romance that ends up happening but because like there, there really isn't anything to like nothing really develops in that area it just kind of happens and then you're like what the heck and all of a sudden the main guy character is obsessed with Mingxin and I'm like where did this come from so yeah I don't know if I will continue there's supposed to be a second book kind of following the events of the first as all second books do um and where more magic kind of comes into play and all this stuff and I don't think I will continue reading that so I don't know it doesn't come out for a while so maybe if it's like available on Libby at some point when it comes out I will check it out but I didn't really care enough and I was just kind of like disappointed like it really needed to start before like we shouldn't we should have started with a whole other book anyway then the next book I read is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn this was recommended by Katie is reading I love Katie 
I love her channel and she loves the uh, Veronica Roth or no Veronica Speedwell series which is a mystery series kind of set I think is it Victorian London it's like the 1880 somethings and you follow Veronica and Stoker as they get like into like mysteries and stuff and so the first book Veronica is trying to figure out her past because she doesn't really know anything about her past and there's like a murder of I think he's a baron and he knows about her past and so then she's dra dragged into this murder and then Stoker is dragged into this murder because the baron is like you need to take care of Veronica and then the baron dies and so then they're trying to figure out this murder and then they end up figuring more about uh, Veronica's backstory as well at the same time and I really enjoyed this book. Basically if you like Bones and you like Booth and Brennan it's basically if Booth and Brennan were in the Victorian is it Victorian? Who knows? If they were in 1887 and solving mysteries because it's literally there's literally a scene where Victoria and Stoker have to hide out in a uh, traveling circus and they are uh, the Russians or something and they are knife throwing if that is not Buck and Wanda from that one circus episode, that, that is literally them. So I thought that was so funny. So it's basically Booth and Brennan. So if you're, if you miss Bones, I would watch, or I would read the uh, Veronica Speedwell series. And so I definitely want to check out the other books. There's like 10 of them or something. I think nine have come out and I think the 10th is coming out in like a year or so. And so I have a lot of reading to do, um, but I definitely at least want to read another one this year. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Definitely recommend. And so finally, this video is almost an hour long from my time. Hopefully I've cut it down a bit more. We are now getting to the last book that I read in September, and that was Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. So I have Foundryside here. I really enjoyed Foundryside. If an, essentially you follow Sancha, Sancha, who is a thief, and she gets tasked with stealing this magical artifact, and this draws her into like this big conspiracy theory and you're kind of in like this like kind of like pseudo like Italy I think it is it's there's like these merchant houses and then there's this really cool magic system called scribing and so you can change the reality reality of objects to make them do things that they normally wouldn't do and so you find like you kind of start off with Sancho kind of getting this like artifact that she's not supposed to have and getting dragged into people trying to have this artifact and so it's just it's so good it is so good I feel like more people need to talk about this book it is amazing and so I finished the second book which of course follows the events of the first book and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything but it is incredible I loved it even more than the first book and I'm so excited for the third book uh it's called Locklands I need to check it out from the library eventually but yes I definitely want to like finish the series this year I think but it was so good and I loved it and the romance was just so nice. It's sapphic so it's just ah it's perfect and I just think the magic system is so cool. I haven't read anything like it before. Yeah it's just so good and I definitely recommend the series. So yes anyway that is everything that I read the past few months. I might need to start doing these like monthly or something because I have been talking for almost an hour. Oh my god I'm so like not wanting to edit this video. Okay, anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know any of the books that you have read recently. I'd love to hear them. I have just been in such a good reading mood. It's been so wonderful. I haven't read this much. I haven't read this like much since like high school. So it's been so nice to be able to read so much again. And I've been loving the audiobooks that I've been reading and going like to and from work reading audiobooks have been so nice. I really love checking out books from the library. It's been very nice as well and so I'm just having such good vibes and I'm so happy and I'm so happy to finish my master's in December because then I can just read. I won't have any schoolwork and I can just read and I can read so many more books. So yes, I'm very excited. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank you.